I'm Dave Kassler, KE0OG, with a new episode of Ask Dave, showing how to use a manual antenna tuner. I'm here to answer your questions about ham radio, and I'm gearing the responses to those new to the hobby. I'm grateful for all the comments, questions, and feedback. Keep it coming. Today's video is motivated by a question from a YouTube user named 1974 long hair. And whoever you are, thank you for your question. He asks, how can he use a manual antenna tuner? So I'm going to demonstrate that using this little MFJ 901B antenna tuner, one of MFJ's earliest products. It has no built-in SWR meter, so I'll demonstrate how to use it with this old Radio Shack Micronta SWR meter, and then how to use it with your rig's built-in SWR meter. First, just a bit of background. The block diagram shows a transmitter and antenna, and the correct placement of the SWR meter, more technically known as an SWR bridge, and the antenna tuner. If your tuner has a built-in meter, then the SWR meter is in the right place automatically. Note, and this is important, that the antenna tuner is tuning or matching the impedance of the combined feed line and the antenna itself, not just the antenna. The SWR bridge simply measures the reflected power and uses it to display the SWR. Now, just a word about SWR, or standing wave ratio. SWR is not the be-all, do-all antenna measurement. It is true that a one-to-one -one SWR implies all the power of the transmitter goes forward without any reflections. But in practice, this is hard to achieve. If you can get your SWR down to two-to-one or lower, you're doing fine. The real measure of an antenna is how well it radiates and how well it receives. Don't forget that you can have an SWR of one to one with a dummy load and it doesn't radiate anything. So build that great antenna, trim it as best you can, and then if your SWR is less than two to one on the frequencies you want to use, you're ready to go. If it's less than three to one, your radio's built-in antenna tuner, if you have one, can touch it up. If it's greater than that, you probably want an external tuner and some way to measure what you're doing. Let's look at what's inside this tuner. Not much there. The key components are this coil and these two variable capacitors. The inductance of the coil can be changed by selecting taps along the coil with this switch. This tiny ballon here is only used if you're matching a balanced feed line. I'm going to ignore that for this video since we're assuming coax. Here's a schematic diagram of the antenna tuner. This is a pretty standard arrangement called a T-match and is used often in commercially available tuners. You'll note only reactive components, two capacitors and one inductor, all of which are adjustable. Conceptually, the purpose of these reactive components is to catch the reflected power, then reflect it back toward the antenna. Some will be radiated and some re-reflected and so on. Eventually, all the power is either radiated by the antenna or absorbed in the ohmic resistance in the antenna and in the feed line. If you have a high SWR and a wimpy high ohmic resistance feed line, all that power reflecting back and forth will generate a lot of heat and you'll lose most of your power, and oh, by the way, the SWR will look better than it really is. If your transmission lines are robust, there's a good chance that much of the power will eventually be radiated. Look at the back of the MFJ tuner. One connector is labeled coax. This is the coaxial cable to the antenna. The other is labeled transmitter. 
This is what you connect to the SWR bridge. Looking at the back of the SWR bridge, the one labeled antenna connects to the tuner, and the one labeled transmitter is actually connected to the transmitter. Different antenna tuners will have different labels. Check the owner's manual. It'll guide you in what you need to do. Okay, enough preliminaries. Let's actually match my 80 meter full wavelength antenna to my Tentec Jupiter on 20 meters and see what happens. Note that I've taken my automatic antenna tuner out of the loop here so we can see it done manually. I will show two ways. First, with the external SWR bridge and the other with the rig's built-in SWR bridge. Here's my radio. Like most transceivers, it has a tune button. When I press this button, the rig puts out a continuous carrier of about 20 watts, and you'll hear the side tone. I have the rig tuned right now to a little used frequency on 20 meters for this demonstration. Here's the SWR bridge. The SWR is indicated on the meter. To use this single needle meter, put the switch in the forward position and adjust the calibration for full deflection. Then switch to reflected power and observe the SWR, which I've deliberately made horrible for the demonstration. Keep it on reflected power and we see how it goes up and down as I try to match it. Okay, let's include the tuner in the screen. With the transceiver in receive, tune the tuner for maximum noise. Then put the transceiver in tune, observe the actual SWR, and then tweak the tuner's knobs back and forth to get the lowest SWR, here shown as about 1.1 to 1, an excellent match. Note that I usually start with the inductance, then the transmitter capacitor, then tweak the antenna capacitor, and gradually move toward the best SWR. Unless you're tuning into a dummy load, chances are you'll never achieve a one-to-one -one match. Most radios are happy if you can just get it under two-to-one. Now, let's see if we can tune using the SWR meter that's built into the transceiver and reads SWR directly. We have a horrible initial SWR, but we can adjust this. Note that the built-in SWR meter is nowhere near as sensitive to change as a real one, but we can certainly use it effectively. So, let's summarize. Make sure everything is in proper order. First the transceiver, then the SWR bridge, then the tuner, then the feed line and antenna. First, while in receive mode, tune for maximum noise. This gets you close. Then tune for minimum reflected power. Then read your SWR. You can do this with the SWR meter built into the tuner, with an outboard SWR meter as shown here, or with the rig's built-in SWR meter. It's that straightforward. One last caution. Every time you change frequency a little, you may want to tweak the tuning for minimum reflected power. And if you change bands or antennas, you will certainly want to go through the entire process to retune. You can write down the approximate settings for each frequency you like, and this will get you there faster. Please comment, either on YouTube or on my website. You can submit a question directly by going to ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave. If you want, you can toss a buck in the tip jar, either using the YouTube method or on my website. And please subscribe and tell your friends about this channel. This week's picture is of me examining some flowers along Owl Creek. Yes, that's me under all that dirt bike riding paraphernalia. It's deep in the Aspen Forest, and it was a beautiful day. Until next time, I'm Dave Kassler, KE0OG, 73.